Hello everyone. Welcome to self discovery amidst social distancing. I hope everyone is doing OK. Uh, my name is Bethany Ahoy. I am the career consultant for arts and humanities and our ATEC students over at the University Career Center. And I've also got on with me Mr. Alan Knox. He is the career consultant for the School of Management. He'll be serving um, as the question guy. He'll be monitoring um, comments and questions that you have, which brings me to making sure um, you guys enter in any questions you might have. We'll answer them as we go, and then we'll also have time for Q&A at the end. So again, please speak up. Let us know thoughts and feelings on all of this. We know that um, this is a bizarre time for all of you, so we are I'm trying to give you some information that could be helpful, um, some different things you could do to fill your time. I know with social distancing and, and us being isolated so many times, um, maybe running out of things to do, watched everything on Netflix. Um, let's think of some things we can do that, that will benefit us in the long run. Um, so we're gonna run through the agenda of what we're gonna talk about today. So first we're going to talk about the importance of self discovery. Some resources and tools to use how to apply the info to your career path and then again questions. We'll have time for questions at the end, but please again make sure and, and ask your questions as we go as well. So why is self discovery important? So some of these questions we have up here. Um, they're they're great questions. Uh, a lot of us might have some some difficulty answering them, right? Um, taking this time of solitude and use it to take a good inventory of yourself. It will really it will really pay off in the end to have a thorough understanding of of your desires and what makes you tick. Um, kind of what what do you want to do with your life? To know whether or not a particular career path or position will be a good fit for you, you, you know you must first have a solid understanding of your interest, values, skills, and personality. Um, how well do you know yourself? I think a lot of us think, you know, I, I know myself pretty well, but then when someone asks you some of these questions, you kind of start to realize, you know, maybe I have some more, <laughs> some more work to do. So let's talk about what self-discovery looks like um, and some, some resources that will help you along this journey. OK, so what are your career related interests and skills? Psychologist John Holland developed a, a widely used and recognized career theory um, that states based on research that personalities seek out and flourish in career environments they fit and that jobs and career environments are classifiable by the personalities that flourish in them. So I think all of us can kind of think of examples of um, a stereotypical um, situation like that, right? You've got uh, maybe uh, someone artistic. You can kind of put picture that person in their mind. They might have real fun colored hair. They're usually maybe pretty talkative. Their, their personalities will brighten out there. And then you might have someone who works in accounting who loves numbers, who's very black and white thinker, right? So there's definitely some truth to that. Um, so we'll kind of go through, if you can see here on the right, um, these are John Holland's codes. So these are the six codes that um, most of us fit into. And it's usually not just one, it's usually two to three codes that you'll fit into. So we'll just do a brief overview um, of each one of these codes and maybe take note um, of which ones you relate to. Um, and again, feel free to uh, give us any thoughts or concerns you're having while we're reading through this. And again, any questions. So the first code is realistic. So they're known as the doers, uh, practical, scientific, methodical. So some careers that fall into this would be drafters, engineer, mechanics. They're, they're the really hands on. Then you've got your investigative area. Um, those are the thinkers. So you observe, you analyze, you evaluate. Some um, examples of these careers would be doctors, computer programmers, and psychologists. Again, there's a lot more that fall into these. I just wanted to give you guys some examples. Uh, third is your artistic group, known as the creators. Uh, they're innovative, intuitive, 
um, and again, the creators. Some examples of these positions that fall into this category would be architects, journalists, and graphic designers. Social, so I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, they're known as the helpers, so they enlighten, inform, and train. Examples would be counselors, social workers, and teachers. Uh, next, we have enterprising, who are known as the persuaders. They influence, persuade, and perform. So examples of these might be financial planners, managers, CEOs, and politicians. And lastly, we have conventional, so there are organizers. Data-driven, detail-oriented, and analytical. These would, these, um, would include accountants, actuaries, and data administrators. So again, I think a lot of us can might quickly identify one or two that you relate to based on some of the words I just said. But again, likely you fall into two or three of these. Um, and some of the resources we'll talk about in a little bit help you identify which code you fall into um, and maybe see which ones are higher for you and lower. Um, and again, it's just kind of looking at it's a good starting place to look at some different careers that fall into the codes that you most highly relate with. Does anyone have any questions on the Holland code? And I know it takes a little bit to type out your question and for it to get over to us. Um, so again, any, I don't know if this is the first time you guys have heard about the Rise Set code. It's pretty widely used um, in, the, in the career world. Um, Again, most people kind of fall into two or three. I know uh, mine is social enterprising um, and artistic. And so it's been interesting to see how those three kind of play off of each other. And, and it's not just in your in your job. It's also the, your hobbies play into this as well. Um, Alan, do we have any questions coming in? Uh, yeah, we have one question. Uh, the student is um, basically saying that they feel like they fit into multiple categories, even more than three, and they're just not really sure what, what their number one category is or you know how they should approach this. They feel like they're kind of all over the place with it. Yeah, and I, I, I myself have met with lots of students that fall into your exact same boat, so you're definitely not alone in that. So some of us like a lot of different things and are interested in a lot of different things, and so that's kind of a, it's great, but it also makes it hard when that comes down to picking a career. So my first step is I would definitely encourage you to take the assessments that we're about to talk about to kind of help tease out um, your likes, your dislikes, which ones you like more, and then definitely make an appointment with us and, and with your career consultant. Um, and let's talk about it and we'll help you. We'll help you work through that piece through assessments and conversations and and again, helping you kind of get a plan. So again, you're not alone in that. There's a lot of people with that and that feel the same way, just kind of scattered. So again, the assessments and having a conversation with your career consultant will really help you um, get focused. So thank you for that question and sharing that. Anything else, Alan, right now? That is it for the Q&A box for right now. Okay. OK, so another really important thing to know and think about. So your work values. And this is something I think, um, you know, you really don't start thinking about until you've gotten into a job that doesn't meet one of these. And then you start to realize this doesn't match up with my values. So what we really want to do is get a thorough understanding of that before you get into that job um, so you can avoid some of this. Um, if you, if you have the opportunity to. Um, so it's important for you uh, to know what your values are. So that way you know if a certain job or company will be a good fit. Your work values are the subset of your beliefs and ideas that are related to your occupation or job. So your values are, are really the core principles and they're an important part of who you are. Um, so I think we can all think of some pretty obvious jobs that you think, wow, that just would not be, that doesn't fit with my beliefs but some that are not so obvious. So kind of thinking about, um, you know, building relationships uh, within it. Are you going to be around a bunch of people? Are you going to be kind of secluded? Um, your working conditions. So I think a good example of that is uh, a cubicle. 
is the place that you're looking at. Are they everyone's in cubicles? And so there's a lot of people that love that. It's open. It's um, you can have conversations. It feels uh, again just just open and social. For some people, that's great. For others, that's really hard. Um, you want your space. You need to be able to think and focus. You want to be able to close off your space to outside noises. You can have a job you really love, but then you find out when you get there that the actual environment is not <laughs> conducive for you. Um, and again, this is not an exhaustive list of values. These are just some uh, of the more prevalent ones. Um, job security. So how important is it for you to be in a role that has pretty, you know, it's not really an industry that's going to lay off much, um, especially given this time, you kind of look around and see which industries are hit harder than others. Um, and something to keep in mind with that, typically, um, you know, there's there's pros and cons. So you might have a job that has more higher compensation, but it's also going to be not high, potentially not as high much job security as one that pays a little bit lower. Um, like if you worked for a government agency um, or somewhere that maybe isn't as affected by some of the job market stuff. So again, there's lots of different resources that we'll also talk about in a minute to research some of these, but it's important to thoroughly um, understand your values and then do the research for that position in that company to see if those match up. Does anyone have any questions on work values? Again, I know some of these change as you um, as you get older, or as you have other experiences, or you know if you decide to have a family. Um, one of your values could be work hours and um, work life balance. Whereas if you want to be on the go and you want to travel and um, kind of never know where you're going to be type of thing, then that might not be obviously as big a deal to you. Again, it's just important to ask yourself these questions now then before you get into a position and realize it's not a good fit. Alan, do we have anything in the chat box? Uh, no new questions at this time. OK. And one more thing to add to that. These are really good conversations to have uh, with your friends and family um, or, you know, again, as career consultants to kind of help talk out. A lot of times as you're brainstorming and talking about it, it helps kind of bring some of these to mind and other people that are already in the workforce and have been can also really help speak to what some of these really look like in the day to day. All right, your skills and abilities. So what are you good at? What are you proud of? Um, what classes have you done really well in? And on the other side of that, what classes were tough for you? What classes really? You had to make yourself sit down and study. You needed to go to maybe extra tutoring classes. You know, for me, it was math. Math was not my strong suit. I knew early on <laughs> that math was not going to be a part of my career aspirations. So right now is a great time um, to kind of take a look, a realistic look of, hey, what am I good at? What um, what do I want to improve upon and what areas are or areas I probably need to stay away from as far as careers go. And again, this doesn't mean, hey, I'm not good at it now, so I should not even worry about it. Um, I think that there's definitely skills that with some training and research and more practice, you could definitely you know, improve upon. So keep that in mind too. Um, this is a great time to utilize different resources to um, improve your skills and abilities. For instance, LinkedIn Learning has a plethora, almost limitless um, trainings and modules over improving your abilities in Excel spreadsheets to how to um, improve your communication. So many different uh, avenues in order to do that. Um, also, YouTube is a great way uh, to to learn different skills. Photoshop, I know they have um, how to be a better photographer. I mean, you name it. Um, there's different things that you can do in addition to the classes you're taking. But I also want to preface that with. Um, we don't talk about this to put any more pressure on yourself. This period of time is affecting everyone in different ways, so you may have had to take on extra new different responsibilities during all this that you weren't having to do before. So if, if you don't come out of this learning a new language 
you're not going to be judged and that's totally fine. Um, you know, we're just talking about some of these things for for those of people that maybe have a little extra time on their hands and um, during all this self isolation, you know, wanting to fill it with some things that can build upon your current skills. So again, LinkedIn learning and YouTube, both really great resources that um, you can definitely utilize to build upon your skills, <clears throat> your skills. All right, any questions in the chat box, Alan? <clears throat> Um, well, there's one question I think you might have kind of answered it. The student was saying that they don't really know what their skills or abilities are, and they're not confident that their their skills are even something that they could get paid for. So they just feel a little lost in that. And I, and I think you were kind of touching on some options for them. Yeah, and I, sometimes I think it you can't see the forest for the trees. So So set up a meeting with your career consultant. Let's talk about it because you do have skills and abilities. We just need to um, pull them out, look at them, um, and then again, match them with different jobs that, that would be a good fit for you. Um, you clearly have some skills and abilities. You got into a great university. Um, I think it's just a matter of needing to have those conversations so that you see what you're good at too. And again, these resources we're about to talk about, I would highly encourage you to take those. So we just need to start start creating some building blocks for you and having those conversations. But again, you're not alone in that. There's been we've had several students um, that are feeling the same way. So um, again, I think by coming to this today, you're already building upon that. And again, by utilizing the resources will be it will be great steps. OK. So next we're going to talk about uh, the resources. So here on the screen we've got um, six different uh, assessments available to you all to take. These are all free. Um, the focus two in the choices planner that have UTD Career Center next to them, you as students and alumni are able to access those through the Career Center. So you log on to the University Career Center website, you go to resources, and then these assessments are listed on there and you log in with your uh, UTD ID and password and there's access there and all the directions and how to log in are also there. So all of these are designed to help you discover your, your interest, your abilities, your personality, and then they all have the career components with them. So I encourage you to take one, two, all of them, whatever you have time for, um, and journal and keep all of your of your data together, and then kind of meet with us and let's talk about it. So uh, career one stop, my next move, um, ONET interest profiler. So those all will take into account. Um, your interests, what you want to do, all that good stuff, and then give you some kind of broad career um, options for you. Um, and then 16 personalities is based off the Myers-Briggs. And that will again kind of give you a brief overview of your personality. And we have kind of talked earlier about how it's important to know that in order to um, match those with your skills and abilities and, and get compare that into the a good job and career fit. So again, uh, the focus to in choices planner is through our career center website and then all the others are 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 open to the public to take. So again, please take some of these, all of these, save them in a file on your desktop, make uh, make an appointment with us and let's talk about it so we can really start narrowing down your options and get a plan together. Does anyone have any questions about these resources or has anybody used any of these and would like to share your experience? I know the focus too, we have um, quite a few professors that utilize that in their classes and we go and and um, talk with students about that quite a bit and same with choices planner. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't know if anyone on here has had experience with those and could speak to that. Um, they're both they're they're all pretty simple assessments. Um, some of them are a little bit more time consuming than others, but none of them what I say are hard. Um, you just want to answer them as honestly as you can so that way you get the, <clears throat> the most out of your results. 
Anything in the chat box, Alan? Uh, there is one question. This student uh, states that their parents told them to get a degree, but they really don't know what degree to get. Um, so I'm guessing you're, you're going to say we, they can use some of these uh, resources to try and assist with that. Absolutely. And again, not the first time we've heard that, right? Our parents want um, they want us to have a good job. They want us to be able to pay for a roof over our heads and food to eat. Um, but beyond that, they may not have a whole lot more to add. So again, let's talk about these resources. Let's take these assessments, meet with your career consultant. I can't say that enough. And let's have that conversation. Let's get that information you need um, together so that way you can have that conversation with your parents and tell them the research you found um, that you've done on the job market and on this specific place um, and all that good stuff. So I think once you have you just need some more information and these are the ways to get it so you can have that conversation with your parents. Anything else, Alan, before we move on? That is it for now. OK. So research, so we just um, kind of touched on that a little bit. So you've got you've done your assessments. You've um, journaled, you've started gathering all your information. You've got all this now, what do I do? So now it's definitely a good time to start doing your research. So utilizing LinkedIn is a huge component of all of this. So anyone that is not on LinkedIn yet, um, I strongly encourage you to go ahead and create an account. It's not just for those that are already in the job market. It's definitely a great tool for students. You begin connecting and linking with your, um, with your fellow students, with faculty, with your career advisors. Um, begin uh, networking with with other people in internships. You can find internships, part time jobs on LinkedIn, just lots of different information you can get on there. Um, and then obviously through networking, you can do research through informational interviewing. So that looks like reaching out to someone who does the job you might hope to do one day and having a short conversation with them of, you know, I'm interested in this career. Can you tell me more about what this job looks like day to day, um, what are some pros and cons of this position, that type of thing. So I've had several students the last couple of semesters get full time job offers um, or internships because of some informational interviewing they did uh, because it shows that you took a genuine interest in learning about the position before applying for it or for reach it before you reached out to the company later for a position. And then ownetonline.org is another fantastic resource. So it um, partners the government uh, Department of Labor and it has almost every um, occupation under the sun on there. You literally search in the toolbar for that position and it comes up with the typical duties associated with that job along with salary information by state as well as the um, hiring data. So you you know you you definitely ideally would like to get into a career that's hiring at a growing rate and not one on decline. And that's speaking to that job security for later on as well as your ability your realistic ability to get a job in that setting upon graduation. Uh, so also you're going to be comparing and contrasting the research that you found. So as you're taking these assessments and having these conversations really look at how is your how is your information coming together, right? So a great way to go through that is again, I know I'm saying this a lot, uh, but meeting with us here at the Career Center to kind of help you help you bring it together. Does anyone have any questions on the research aspect? Again, I know this is a lot of information, so I just I want you to take away some key points um, with LinkedIn and uh, utilizing ONET, just kind of getting on there and playing around with it and checking out all the different all the different pieces it has as well. Alan, do we have anything coming in? Uh, yes, there's a question. I, I think you've kind of answered it, but this student asks, he says he's an alumni and at this point his degree as well as the skills that he's um, able to receive 
he really doesn't want to do this anymore. He he wants to have a different career essentially, but he asks, what should I do? Yeah, and again, I think um, like we've talked about earlier, people's interests tend to change over time. So this happens. You would definitely not be the first person this happened to. Um, I, again, it's about uh, let's look at what transferable skills you have. Let's look at um, your skills and abilities now. Let's do those assessments and see how your um, how you've changed since you started this position. Kind of having those conversations, and then you know making a plan on on how to get to your new goal um, would definitely be be where we would have a good start. So as alumni, um, I'm glad that you are participating in our meeting today. Um, and just to let all you other students know that are on that we serve alumni um, for life as well. So upon graduation, you still have all access to your university career center. And that's important to know. So again, thank you for reaching out. OK. So pulling it all together. So these are some questions that you want to ask. Right, so how do, how do your value, skills, and abilities match up to your to your current career, career goals? So you might have started this with a certain goal in mind, and then upon doing this investigation and this research and these assessments, you're realizing, hey, this may not be as good a fit as I thought. Um, again, making lists, journaling your, your findings, you know, questions that you have for family, friends, for your career center, kind of list all those out as you're doing this. Um, and again, as part of meeting with your career consultant, we'll help you with that overall plan um, to help you get to that goal. So once you've pulled it all together, you've kind of we've narrowed down two or three industries that you're that you're seriously considering. Um, how do you how do you test out your findings, right? How do you know if this research and these assessments, you know, we've got we've got to find out if they're accurate. So this looks like internships, part time jobs, volunteering. You know, you've got to expose yourself to these environments in order to truly know if it's a good fit. And ideally, you know that you can do that before you enter the, the full time job market. So again, I know we're in a quarantine, so you might be saying, Bethany, like, how am I supposed to do this during quarantine? Well, remember, there are still internships. There are still lots of jobs out there. They're all a lot of them are being done virtually. So it's matching your skills and abilities to how how can I help um, these companies out there that are hiring now? So ask yourself, what do I have to contribute? Um, and again, they're out there. It's just a matter of putting in maybe the extra time and energy in order to find them. Um, but again, this is definitely not a time to slow down in your career journey. If anything, it's it's time to amp it up. So again, um, meeting with us, we can kind of help you with some resources on looking for some of these internships and part time jobs. Um, and when things start to open up because they will, um, you want to be on top of it and have done as much as you can do um, when that when that time does come. So again, by you reaching out to the Career Center and by you attending these, um, really give yourself a pat on the back because it's much easier to get on Netflix or doodle or go outside. Um, than it is sometimes to to want to get into the weeds of some of this. So really, thank you for for joining us today. Um, do we have any questions or anything, Alan? At this yes, point? actually a couple of them just came in. Um, one student asked, she said, I love art, but I'm not sure I can get paid for that, I, I, that I could get paid in that industry. What should I do? Should I give up on a deg uh, degree in art? Um, I would definitely say, no, you know, I never would tell anyone to give up on their dreams. You have that for a reason. So I think um, definitely like we've talked about in this in this seminar, you know, let's let's look at your skills. Let's look at your abilities. How are they transferable into some positions that are hiring? Let's maybe broaden your job search. Um, there's definitely jobs out there for people with um, art degrees that may just not be in the same setting that you're thinking of. So all the conversation we have is how can you do what you do, but maybe in a different setting than you thought of. Um, and again, let's take these assessments. Let's take a, a broad look at all of your skills and abilities and really how to bring that together. 
So again, for anyone else, you know, definitely don't don't give up on your dreams. There's always ways to continue your passions on the side if you end up getting another job that might be outside of your of your dream job, right? Um, then you continue that passion on the side and kind of keep that going for sure. But yes, again, come meet with me at the Career Center. You can schedule that on Handshake and we can definitely delve into that a little deeper. OK, and one additional question, Bethany. Uh, this student says that his parents want him to go into accounting or into med school, but he really doesn't think uh, that he could do it or that he would even want to do it. So I think really his question is essentially, what does he do now? Well, thank you for sharing that because I know that's that's got to be very hard. Um, again, I think uh, a lot of our parents can come from that same mindset of we want you to have a, a good job. We want you to have stability. So I think the biggest piece there is is you having um, you taking these assessments, you coming to meet with us. Let's have those conversations of what you do want to do and what you are good at. And a lot of times it's just a matter of taking that specific plan back to your parents and loved ones and saying this is what I am good at. This is the research I've done. This is the job market. This is the pay. So they know you have a plan. Um, I think a lot of it is our parents just want us to um, you know, be safe, be stable, um, be able to take care of ourselves. And a lot of times it's just being able to have that conversation with them. Um, so again, us at the University Career Center can can provide you with the resources to get that information and kind of help you practice that conversation for sure. Um, so thank you for that. Again, I know you're definitely not alone in that situation. So thank you for 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 asking that question. Is that all of our questions, Alan? Yes, that appears to be all the questions. OK. Thank you all again for attending today. We really appreciate you being with us. So here's just a little reminder. We've got virtual office hours daily, Monday through Friday, uh, 2 to 3 p.m. For, for virtual office hours with career consultants. So um, a couple of us um, from each of the each of the schools are available Monday through Friday, 2 to 3, to answer um, some quick questions you might have about your career journey. And then we have a virtual resume lab. Um, just if you if you want to have your resume looked at from 10 to 11 Monday through Friday. So several different options on top of always having the ability to make an individual appointment with your career consultant again through Handshake. So we just want to remind you guys that we are here for you and we'll continue to be providing you with these virtual power hours every Wednesday from 12 to 1 constantly coming up with uh, new topics and getting new information as the world is continuing to change and new information is coming in. We're making sure we um, give you guys the best information to prepare you for for the workforce. So again, thank you so much for sharing your time with us and we hope to keep seeing you in appointments and in our power hours. All right, well, thank you, Alan, for serving as our, our question guru, and um, you all have a good rest of your day, and we will talk to you soon.